Last summer, one of the world's richest clubs, Paris Saint-Germain, invested big time in free transfers. Sergio Ramos, Gini Wijnaldum, Gianluigi Donnarumma, and last but not least, Lionel Messi, all made the move to the French capital without a single euro being handed over in transfer fees. But this year, it could be about the one that got away. So that's why we're asking why are so many top-class footballers running down their contracts. Hello there and welcome to Football Now from Doha. My name is Sam Ashu. Now, if last summer was dramatic in terms of players exiting their clubs, this year looks set to follow a similar pattern. Two players who had once been the most expensive transfers of all time, Gareth Bale and Paul Pogba, are both available for nothing, at least with regards to a transfer fee. Juve's Paolo Dybala is much in demand too, as is PSG's Kylian Mbappe. The French international with the world at his feet at the age of just 23 can literally pick and choose where to go, although he could of course stay with the new rising force in football. So why are so many of the game's biggest names so keen to move on at the end of their contracts? You might have seen in the past that players would be, not desperate, but very keen for their contracts to be renewed at their current club. Now there's more of a relaxed feeling because there are options available, not only in the Premier League if they're a Premier League player or in Serie A if they play in Italy, but further afield where they will be remunerated in a similar fashion, maybe even better than where they currently are. So footballers making lucrative and in many cases controversial moves without a transfer fee isn't entirely a new thing. The Bosman ruling was introduced in 1995, meaning players could now move at the end of their contract, crucially, without a transfer fee being paid. And that's just what some of them did. Including this man, Steve McManaman, who was one of the first elite footballers to take advantage of this opportunity. In 1999, he swapped Merseyside for Madrid, leaving Liverpool, the club he'd been at since the age of 14, on a free transfer. It may have spoiled his love affair with the Liverpool fans, but within 12 months, he was a Champions League winner. In 2011, you could have been mistaken for thinking that a 30-something Andrea Pirlo's career was winding down. Juventus didn't think so, though, snapping up the stylish midfielder on a free transfer. New teammate Joan Luigi Buffon said that when Andrea told me that he was joining, my first thought was, God exists. A player of his level and ability, not to mention that he was free. I think it was the signing of the century. You could be right. Although this man has a claim on that front too. Robert Lewandowski was a goal scoring machine at Borussia Dortmund and eight years later is still one at Bayern Munich. The German giants have won the Bundesliga every year since the pole arrived. 2014. You cannot really say that anyone else has surpassed him in terms of value and sporting achievements. He's won the league every year he's been with Bayern Munich. He has a Champions League trophy, plenty of other cups. And in terms of his individual contribution goals-wise, he's scored almost a goal every single game. Superb value, brilliant player. You just think, why don't you want a Ballon d'Or? So, being a footballer can be a precarious and short career, but a common criticism is that there's no longer any loyalty in the game, hence players moving on at the end of their contracts in the hope of gaining another big payday. But there are some stars who spent the entirety of their career at one club, despite plenty of offers from elsewhere. Paolo Maldini began his career at AC Milan at the age of just 16 in 1985. When he finally called it a day in 2009, he had more than established himself as one of the greatest defenders of all time. Another stylish Italian, Francesco Totti, made his Roma debut aged just 16 in 1993. 24 years later and the golden boy of Italian football finally hung up his boots after scoring 307 goals in 786 appearances for his hometown club. Compared with those two, Carlos Puyol was a late starter, not making his Barcelona debut until the age of 20, but he made up for lost time with his rugged style of defending and hairstyle standing out from the crowd. And like Maldini, he must have an awfully large trophy cabinet at home. So were footballers really more loyal in the good old days? I'm Leon Osman and I was at Everton for 25 years. It doesn't come without desire, a bit of luck, a lot of hard work personally to make sure that you you stay relevant, you stay fit, you stay sharp, you, you're providing assists and goals and, and the manager really wants you. Um, but ultimately all of those things came together and that's why I stayed so long. You get to mid to late 30s and you look back and you go, wow, that was, uh, that was a pretty good run I had there. And um, in fact, they're the moments when you look back and, and feel proud. But I do think that the days of, of, of 
the majority of players coming through at one club and, and lasting their career at one club, maybe just about making it to two clubs. I think that's a thing of the past. I think most players now will, will touch five plus clubs in their career. Who then normally gets the blame for convincing footballers to leave their teams at the end of their contracts? Well, it's probably the agents, but is that the whole story? I think if you've got a good relationship with, with an agent, then you're in control of, of every move they make. They use their skills to make sure those moves are done um, with skill and with real ability, with good relationships to make sure that you may get the move you want or you may get the contract you want, but you know, I, I think it's I think it's far-fetched to suggest that agents work without the knowledge of, of the players they represent. With the end of the season approaching, plenty of players will be pondering that age-old question. Should I stay or should I go? Watch this space, as they say. And do let us know what you think at home using the hashtag FootballNowContracts. Our contract's not up just yet, so we'll see you next time for more. Football Now.